Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out Quirkle. Now this is an easy to play game, 2 to 4 players, ages 6 and up, with the average playtime being between 45 and 60 minutes. Now in this game, players are going to be trying to earn victory points by matching colors and shapes, but not both at the same time. So with that being said, let's take a quick look at the components and see how the game is played. Okay, so as far as your components are concerned, you've got a cloth bag here, and you've got some uh, tile pieces. There are 108 in the game. One side is blank, while the other side has a colored shape on it. There are six different colors and six different shapes. As far as the colors, you've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, or violet if you prefer Roy G. Biv. And then you've got six different shapes. You've got an eight-point star, a four-leaf clover, four-point star, a diamond. You've got a circle and a square. Okay, now game setup is incredibly simple. Take all of the tiles, shuffle them up in the cloth bag, and give six to each player. Hands in this game are hidden from other players, but for the sake of the video, I'm showing you both, just for example purposes. Okay, now the starting player is the person that can create the largest set without having any duplicates. Let me quickly show you what I mean. We're going to take a look at this player first, and in order to create a set, you need... Um, tiles of the same shape but different colors, or tiles of the same color but different shapes. So let's just, again, take a look at this. We've got this square here and this square here. They are different colors. So this is a set of two, so that is a possible play here. You've got these two uh, four-point stars. Again, they are two different shapes, so that's okay. Or two different colors, rather, so that's okay. That's a set of two. And what else? Oh, this one here. You've got the same color, but two different shapes. So at most, this player could play two tiles for his opening move. Now this player over here, just in glancing, I can tell that this player is going to win. Because this player has three of these eight-point stars, all of different colors. Again, you can't have any duplicates. So this player would be allowed to make the first move of the game. Now, a player's turn is pretty simple as well. You'll play as many tiles as you can, tally your score with a separate sheet of paper and pencil. The game does not come with one, by the way, so you'll need to provide your own. And then you'll go ahead and draw that many from the bag to replenish your hand back up to six tiles. So let's take a look at what the player can do. Now, a player can go ahead and lay down tiles, uh, one or more, in such a way where it adds to an existing row or creates one on its own. Now, and if you're going to add to a row that has the same color but different shapes, again, you cannot have duplicates. So, in this case, the player could lay down these two tiles like this. Again, they are all different shapes, so that is okay. You can also put these down in different locations, so as long as they are on the same line. So, another thing that this player could do is um, he could add to the same sh a line with the same shapes but have different colors. So this one up here has eight point stars of green, purple, and orange. He has green, red, and blue in his hand. He could not play green here because that would be a duplicate of the same color. But he could play red and blue like so or like so, whatever the case may be. Another thing worth noting, if you happen to create a quirkle, or if you complete six tiles in a single line like so, you get to score an extra six points. Now, because there are only six colors and six shapes in the game, a line cannot be longer than six because, again, there are no duplicates in the same line. So if a player, or if this player here were to play this blue circle to complete this row of six here, he would get six extra points during the scoring phase. Speaking of the scoring phase, let's just play something and show you how the scoring works. It's very simple. Let's just say that the uh, player went ahead and did this and ignored the quirkle for whatever reason. Which again would be this here. But let's just say he went ahead and added these two 8 point stars up here. Now whenever you play on a line, you just simply count how many tiles are already on that line. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is what's in the line right now. So that player would earn 5 points. Have the player done this instead, he would get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus an extra 6 for uh, making a quirkle. So this would have been the best play, probably. If the player had done this instead, that's 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if you happen to uh, make a play that involves more than one line or row or column, whatever, you'll just simply treat each one individually like you would in Scrabble. 
So after you make your play and give yourself a score, you'll go ahead and take that many from the bag, and then play will continue on to the next person. And this will continue back and forth with all players taking turns trying to earn as many points as they can with the tiles in their hand until the bag runs out of tiles and when a person tries to replenish their hand back up to six tiles but can't do it. In that case, the game ending condition will occur. Now, players will still play out uh, regularly, except they won't be able to draw from the bag to replenish their hand. They'll play as many tiles as they can. When no one can play any more tiles, and you might, you know, end up with like one or two tiles left over because you couldn't play them, the game will end and players will tally their scores. Whoever has the most wins. All right, there you have it, a very brief look at Quarkle. It's important to stress that I did not cover all of the rules found in the manual, but uh, this should give you the general idea. As far as what I thought, very easy to play, very family-friendly game. My only concern are the colors themselves. Um, for example, red and orange, when looked at in just the right light, tend to blend together, at least for me. And uh, what's worse is that uh, colorblind folks, or people with just visual impairments, may not be able to tell the difference between uh, different colors if they're colorblind. So, you know, green might look like this, or purple may look like this. I'm not colorblind, so I don't exactly know how that works, but... I know that uh, certain colorblind people can't see certain shades of color. So um, what I would really would have liked to have seen to help that would be to, you know, sketch a little R for red or O for orange, whatever the case may be, into the tile somewhere so that they can see, okay, that's the letter R, that means this color is red, even if I can't tell it's red. So that, that would have been a nice feature, uh, and unfortunately the game doesn't do that. So um, with that being said, if you want to see my full review, you can, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, that way you can keep up to date on any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.